Hi guys and welcome, or welcome back to my channel. If you're already a subscriber thank you so much for being a Nini Tan. If you don't know what a Nini Tan is, they are the most adorable and honest people on the internet. If you want to be one just subscribe to my channel. So many of you probably know about Jenny's recent podcast with Dua, Lipa, it's going viral everywhere so of course you know. In this video I wanna share my experience, and understanding about Jenny through this podcast. And I wanna share a few new things we get to know about her. And some things, she, said, which should not be ignored, or twisted, like some people, are doing right now. Without further ado, let's get started. In my opinion, this podcast is one of the very few moments we can see the real Jenny Kim, and who she truly is. This podcast makes me proud because I've mentioned before in one of my short videos that I don't like how Jenny never talks about the hate she receives, and that I understand that it may be because of her company, but the fact that this woman is getting her rights stolen is extremely disappointing to me. But in this podcast, for the first time in her seven years of career she spoke up for herself. I don't expect the haters to understand her because they won't, they haven't gone through what she is and haters will always be there. I have seen so many haters saying that she's just trying to play the victim in the podcast and that she's trying to make people feel sorry for her and stuff, but to be honest, I don't care and I'm pretty sure Jenny doesn't either. Jenny said what she had to say. She cleared a misjudgment about herself and went on her way. Now it's your choice to either twist her words and continue wasting your life hating on someone who doesn't even know about your existence or be mature and accept the truth that she is good at what she does and is a human being as well who can get sick and injured a famous quote says if you don't have haters you're doing something wrong this suggests that haters will always be there no matter what you do and especially if you do something worthy of attention and praise Having haters means reaching an extremely high level of success and popularity, where people can't even stand you because of how much you've achieved. Fortunately Jenny has reached that level and I know that no matter how much they try to bring her down, she won't let them get to her. And she proved that in this podcast. I also like how people have picked up on how Jenny finally wants to and has the freedom to express herself and her true identity, which is why I guess this podcast is already making headlines. I think this podcast is emotional to true blinks and gen setters because Jenny really opened up about what she went through and shared sides of herself, which we never knew existed. I personally felt emotional listening to it realizing how far Jenny has come in her life and career. I love this podcast because of many reasons, but the main one has to be because it's about Jenny Kim, not Jenny of Blackpink. You grew up back and forth between South Korea and New Zealand. How do you think you were able to navigate both worlds at such a young age? Like, did you feel like you struggled to fit in? Like, were you able to, you know, have that really kind of authentic experience in both places? and make that work for you. When it comes to the adapting part, I really want to thank my mom in this. I feel like I should explain this too. So my name is Jenny in Korean too, which is very rare because I don't have a separate Korean name. Jenny is an English name that's just written in Korean. So mm -hmm. now that I think back, I think my mom always had this wish that I would experience not just my culture and my country back home but also like travel the world and be that person who is free everywhere I go like when I was in my kindergarten like when I was seven eight that's when my mom always taught me about how big the world is and that it's not just where I am right now but that whole world is like so big yeah. it goes around yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah so um yeah my mom always wanted me to have that in my life and luckily I was just able to enjoy what was in front of my eyes I think um, and I was lucky enough to have, meet great friends when I was in New Zealand who introduced me to their world and I, I think it was a blessing that I had uh, if I look back at it. To be honest I think in the beginning of my career I I guess I had more of that New Zealand side of me where I'm like let me go out there and then 
be a part of that world. But as I got into the business and as I got to learn more about myself and my country, because I was based in Korea while we were recording and in the studio and everything, I started to bring more of the Korean side and the Korean culture into my music and my career. Like they started merging together. Mm -hmm. And the biggest reason I jumped into this music path that I chose was me listening to Korean music when I was living, living in New Zealand and I dreamt of bringing Korean music to to bigger world because I was also living in a world where I was in between the two cultures and I saw it happen like I I really wanted to see it happen in the future and also I wanted to play the part because I feel like I was able to do that with the language barrier and with with the life style that I have lived in the past I wanted to rewind back to the beginning mm -hmm. of Blackpink, mm -hmm. if you'll let me. And I'm just, no, I'm so fascinated by the K-pop trainee system, mm -hmm. which you just talked about. And I understand like it's a really regimented and rigorous training program where you learn a lot, not just about music and dance, but also about language and media and the way you present yourself mm -hmm. to the world. And um, as you went through training, mm -hmm. how were you able to maintain your own identity throughout this? I've actually never really broken down how I did it, but the people who who um, knew the importance of keeping their own identity and character within the training system are the people that are in the group right now. Like mm. a lot of people got lost in in the way because we were so focused to satisfy the people that we were working with but we mm. we weren't sure who we were doing it for and how it can identify us in the future because it's literally years of training it's not just a couple of hours so you you get really drawn into into the lifestyle that they put us in and i think the the girls and i were I don't know if it's is, is it too controversial to say this? I don't know. I'm like No, I don't think okay. so. Yeah. So it's like survival of the fittest. Yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> girls and I try to find our own voice and character in whilst we had like 30 other people training with us and mm. I guess our label saw us trying and yeah. And saw something really, really yeah. special. Like what were some of your favorite inspirations from those trainee days that inspired you? and shaped you in the group today? The variety of different vocal styles that we approached, like we got to experience was definitely something that helped me throughout the way. Um, but the good thing about the label that I was under was not only they wanted us to be able to sing in Korean, but we would cover so many pop songs as a trainee. So by the time we had to record our actual song for blackpink we were able to like play around the language play around like the rhythm and like all, all sorts of things that affect the music with the cultural difference i think and uh, like some of the things i don't know which ex influenced me the most but some of the things that i struggled the most that i could tell you <laughs> right now is that does that work too yeah of course we 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 did a lot of like crumping and like pop in like a, oh, as a yeah. genre of dance and let me tell you this i was not i am not <laughs> the best crumper and popping person in the world <laughs> well you can't be perfect at everything <laughs> but person. yeah but it was you know but also learning something that you're not good at helps you to find what your you know like what your main genre is when it comes to dance cool. and vocals so yeah i mm. have to say just trying out all sorts of different things has pinpointed to become who I am, I think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you put it so beautifully and I think that's that's really important for everyone listening is to know that it's okay to try things and even if you're not good at them, it will lead you to the yeah. place where you're evidently mm -hmm. that's supposed to be. That's what I wanted to say right now. <laughs> One of the reasons you became rapper Jenny <laughs> is because you spoke English, mm -hmm. so you got assigned like the rap parts and the cover songs portion. Mm -hmm of the trainee program mm -hmm. and you've obviously really grown into that rap role in Blackpink I mean it's something that the fans love you for um, and now that it's part of your artistry like what are some things that rap 
allows you to explore and communicate to the world and what comes over you when you do the second verse <laughs> rap in do 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 you know it's like it's like watching you become an entirely different I know, person actually i i've never really said this anywhere but i've wanted to and it's something to do with me rapping okay so like you said i've gotten into the whole idea of rapping because of the language that i mm. i was working with and that's how i started and back when i was a trainee i thought like this is what i was supposed to do and i got cool. so into it and by the time that we debut in my head i'm thinking i'm a rapper <laughs> like <laughs> no <laughs> just in my head i'm going to i'm going to go out there and rap my ass <laughs> Yeah, cool. <laughs> But the strange part was like how you said before about finding your identity like as a trainee too. So after our debut, we did like six songs where I would just rap, like seriously rap. And along the way, I kind of got confused because the more I did singing and music, I came to realize that There's a big side of me inside that I that I love to sing, just play with my vocals, but I actually never had the chance to really explore that as a trainee because I got told that I should be a rapper, you know. Mm. So there was a phase where I would hate to rap. Like I was like, this isn't me. Like this isn't the the Jenny that I envisioned in my head. Like I don't think yeah. I'm a rapper. So there was definitely a a burnout season. Is that how you how mm -hmm. say it? Yeah, there was a moment <laughs> yeah, of was, uncertainty. Uh -huh, there was yeah. a moment where I was denying myself be yeah. just because of the idea that I didn't pick this path that somebody else has picked for me. Mm -hmm. Um and then after taking some time off of work and listening to music in general, And then I actually looked back to the videos that I performed and when I was doing lives to like actually see myself enjoying my like enjoying rapping on stage yeah. and that's the moment where I accepted the fact that that is a part of me but there there was a new side of me that I did hasn't been found within me yeah. that I have discovered so yeah right now I get I am lucky enough to have a choice to be a crazy rapper and <laughs> yeah. but also be sing whenever i want to so yeah it, i would like to say it's it's a it's a switch inside i that that just comes yeah. out of me i'm honestly i'm surprised at myself when i rewatch some of the stuff that i i did live i'm like whoa <laughs> <laughs> Starting my career in Korea as a as a K-pop artist has restricted so many sides of me where it wasn't just allowed to be shown because I'm a K-pop idol. And I was scared, I think, also to express myself. And as things grew over time, I was able to express myself and people would see it as breaking the boundaries rather than she's doing something that she's not allowed to do and being able mm -hmm. to open a new chapter for people that are starting the business in Korea. That's when I realized I want to do, I want to break more boundaries for people in my culture to understand that expressing yourself as however you want isn't that there shouldn't be a standard mm -hmm. there shouldn't be a way to judge like there there shouldn't be a reason to judge and just see it as oh that's how that person expresses themselves so much of your life is on constant display for your fans Your days as a trainee were documented and broadcast mm -hmm. and today Blackpink can't even leave the airport without fans following. <sighs> you know, you're able to share so much of yourself with the world and your fans, but you're also not able to share everything. Like what are some ways that you have felt maybe misunderstood by people and what are some things that you feel like you wish you'd been able to share or share differently if you were given the chance? Over the pandemic and even up to right now, I I I've learned to take care of my body and I've learned a lot about myself with my health and how my muscles work, how bendy I am with my <laughs> arms, with my like in every details I've spent time and it's all started because I would constantly hurt myself during performances and lives compared to other girls and it was just a stressful thing in my life. I'm like there we go. I 
fell again like I tripped mm-hmm. over again and like I realized that even though I had the training days that was more about I need to be good at dancing not how do I keep myself safe and healthy while I'm you know doing doing, doing this so I feel like I've dis- disappointed my fans at some point of my life where it seemed like I wasn't giving my best but I haven't had the moment to say this but I want to say that I did not know how to control my body and like use my body the way I should and mm. like something like I just don't do well in heels you know some people are amazing in heels <laughs> of me being like one of the shortest girl in the group I cannot work with heels. I my feet aren't built for heels. <laughs> Even though I I try and you know sometimes when I'm feeling perfectly fine like when my body's on it like it's sometimes. fine but yeah. Yeah, when when I'm like traveling so much and my body's all bloated and my feet are like so bloated I just if I try to dance in heels I just my stamina just goes really down because I know it's uncomfortable for me. So, yeah, stuff like that. I I've wanted to come cl- not come clean, but wanted to share with my fans that I'm still at a point where I'm learning about myself. Um mm-hmm. if anything, so yeah, let me yeah. let me be the person to share me like from now on and <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful.